Hello, my name is Stacey and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel we talk about everything on this planet, under the sun, in the universe. It's all talk about <laughs> Um, And today I am going to tell you five, five strange things that happened during my dark night of the soul. Listen, if you are in a dark night of the soul, I feel for you. I do. I feel your pain. I feel your your emotional upheaval. I feel your questioning. All of it. I feel I feel for you. But today, I'm gonna tell you five things that happened to me personally when I was going through my dark night of soul. One, I had absolutely no freaking energy whatsoever to deal with anything, anyone, or um literally anything like I had no no energy I could when I was going through the worst the first dark night of the soul that I had when I was going through that I actually couldn't even take showers but like once a week yeah that's exactly how low energy I had like I had no energy I could not barely move I couldn't do anything And getting out of bed and making food or taking a shower or going to the bathroom took everything out of me. It really did. I had absolutely no energy during my dark night of the soul. It was, it was actually, it was actually like to the point where I didn't get out of bed for pretty much days unless I had to go to the bathroom. And if I had to go to the bathroom, I waited as long as I possibly could because I would have to go up basement stairs and deal with the nasty ass bathroom. Now, having no energy is one thing. Number two, this is the second thing that I noticed during my spirit awakening in my dark night of the soul what happened every limiting belief I have had was brought to the surface to heal and if I ignored them or tried to bypass the healing they would keep coming up stronger and stronger and stronger till I either dealt with them or healed them or acknowledged their existence Every, and I'm still dealing with this now because once I uncover some limiting beliefs, more just come up. And when you're getting rid and reprogramming your mind, limiting beliefs are one of the things that you find you actually have a lot of. And during my dark night of the soul, it was like limiting, af limiting belief after limiting belief after limiting belief after limiting belief. And they just kept coming up and coming and coming and coming. And if I tried to ignore them, like, yeah, shove it down with food. Yeah, they'd keep coming up until I dealt with them and healed from why they were there. And it was a very, very, uh, I keep playing with my hair because it's down and I just washed it. So it's like doing its curly thing right now. And I um, apparently have issues with playing with my hair. Anyway, so all my limiting beliefs were coming to the surface. Now, as they were coming up, I purged as much as I could to get rid of them. Here is, now we'll move on to number three. I cried for months at night, just purging sadness and grief from my system. And recently, because I went through about a three week long revisit of the dark night of the soul, like pretty much my system said, oh, we're going to give you a mini dark night of the soul and make you realize why you had one for five fucking years before and why we don't want to do that again. So I'll take the three weeks. So... 
And recently, I cried day and night for two weeks straight, letting go of abandonment and rejection traumas. Um, these two weeks that I was recently dealing with, with the crying, the crying, the crying, and the purging, like, that was a three-week-long cycle, and I am back. I am better. I am doing much better, um, trying to work on the healing and all that, hence why we're doing five strange things that happened during my dark night of the soul. Um, but yeah, when I went through, um, the five year one that I went through every night, probably for the entire five years, I would cry. I would cry and it was not a normal sadness. It wasn't like a normal pain or a normal sadness. It was a deep existential grief. Like, I was purging grief for the entire world. And I just, I would cry. Uncontrollably, unconsolably, just cry. And the recently, the two weeks that I was crying day and night, straight, like, no stop, sobbing, tears just rolling down my face. The only time I stopped was when I had my grandson in my arms, and that was... He literally gave me so much unconditional love vibes for his Mima that I couldn't help but stop crying and just bask in his amazing baby love. So, yeah. Number four. I started questioning everything like a toddler, like, but why? But why? Why is it like that? But why? Why do I have to do that? But why? But why? But why? Literally, you know how a toddler will be like, but why do I have to eat now, mommy? But but why, mommy? Why do I have to eat it all, mommy? Why? But why? But why? But why? Yeah, I but why every freaking thought in my head, in my existence, from the time I was born, I was but why in, why was I even born? But why? But why am I here? Why was I born? Why the fuck am I doing this? But why? But why? But why? Why am I going through this pain? But why? Why did I have to be tortured for 10 years? But why? Why did I have to, why? Why? Why even try? But why? Why, why should I try? And recently I realized I was in that stage of my life. Why even try? Why try? What's the point? I know my potential. I know my healing gifts. I know that I am meant to do some really amazing things with my life. But why try? Why try? Because my whole life, I've been made to feel like I was a worthless piece of crap. And... So I got to the point where if I'm worth this piece of crap and that's how people are going to see me for the rest of my life, why should I even try to make them see me as anything different? Like, why try? Well, now I've got to the point where I am not a worthless piece of crap. And I need to heal myself for me. I'm not trying for anybody else. I'm not trying to succeed for anybody else. I'm not trying to make my life... Um, better for other people i'm trying to heal for me and that's the difference why try because i wasn't ready then now why not try because i'm ready see the difference and number five number five i had to unlearn and unprogram a lot of triggers and trauma responses and limiting beliefs so I could learn the truth and program myself from a place of unconditional love after the pain and sadness subsided. When you are going through this, when you are going through a dark night of the soul and you are questioning, but why, but why, but why? You're unlearning everything in your life that you have learned 
that society has told you you should be, that your parents told you you should be, that your best friend told you you should be. You are unlearning and unprogramming. You're literally unprogramming yourself from such a deep programming program state that you're waking up to what's real, to the truth of the world, to the truth of manifestation, to the truth of how society likes to keep people stuck in unknowing and in the matrix. And if you jump out of the matrix and you start to question, but why, but why, why is this like this? And you start to wake up, um, you have to start to reprogram yourself. And you have to learn, learn even ways of being, even things that you have done in your life. You may have to relearn whole entire like routines, schedules. This is okay. You want to know why? Because you're getting rid of all those negative program thoughts that other people kind of put there. And some of them are there from birth. Some of them, some of them are passed down generation to generation. Some of them are what people call generational curses or generational trauma. And when you're breaking things like that, when you're working on things like that, when you're unprogramming and unlearning those types of things during the dark night of the soul, your whole world gets flipped upside down and it is no wonder why you feel the sadness and pain of the collective while you're doing it. And I'm going to tell you because those are my five weird things that happened while I was going through my dark night of soul. And I have had one major one which was about five years long. Please, I hope you guys never have to go through a dark night of soul that is that long. I ended up on medication at one point because they thought it was bipolar depression. They um, also medicated me because they thought anxiety, fear, PTSD, like all this stuff. They just kept piling medication, not medication, which also kept me stuck in the dark night of the soul because the medication is causing more issues. Um, so what I ended up doing was they they dropped me and said I was cured. So I had to cold turkey my medications. And I was on shit like lithium, um, Prozac, freaking Klonopins, like those kinds of drugs. I had to detox and taper down because I got really bad withdrawals too while I was coming off of all of those meds. Yep. I also don't believe believe that people should be taking pharmaceuticals for spiritual issues, but a lot of doctors don't work in spiritual issues. And if they don't have a exact reason, like a medical diagno diagnosable reason, for why your brain is doing what it's doing. Oh, it's all in your head. So let's give you some drugs that might help. But while we give you those drugs, we got to give you drugs for the side effects of those drugs because you became suicidal. Now you need antidepressants and antipsychotics and mood stabilizers. And it ended up at one point that I was taking 26 pills a day. I had to cut that cold turkey because they dropped me from therapy. And not because I was doing anything wrong or not because I wasn't compliant because I was compliant. I was taking their meds. They dropped me from therapy because I was still smoking pot and they said I was cured of PTSD and bipolar mental health issues. And come to find out that a lot of what they're saying was mental health issues was literally my spirit acting a fool because of the childhood trauma that I went through and nobody taught me how to communicate those things in a healthy way. So my soul, my spirit, my heart, my mind, all of that 
including my body because I punished myself by eating. So I, I was over 426 pounds. So I was punishing myself by overeating to excess and I also, um, I called it my body armor stage two because I needed the body armor to keep people away from me so they wouldn't look at me. Um, and the more weight I lose, the more I notice that men and women look at me more. And now I have to deal with those triggers and those issues because when you start looking at me, you start noticing me and then I'm like, get up, get away. Get away, get, go, go away. You stay here, I stay here, we go away. But anyway, those are the five strange things that happened during my dark night of the soul. And people don't talk enough about the dark night of the soul and what happens and how you can get out of it. So here's the thing. You wanna know how you get out of it? It's really simple. Keep questioning everything and know that your beliefs were programmed and that you can always learn a new program. That being said, I love y'all. Have a great day, great night, wherever you are. And peace out.